does this look bad for James Harden legacy? No, because it'll be his first and nobody cares anymore. All these super teams. Do people consider James Harden a snake like they considered KD one when he left? I would say no, because KD left and went to the team that just knocked them out of the playoffs. Got it. Okay. What's up, good people? Welcome back to another episode of Undrafted Views. We're here. We talk sports from the sidelines. And today we're going to talk about the James Harden trade. Um, what we like about the trade, what we disliked about the trade, and what we expect from it. Let's get into it. So the Brooklyn Nets basically landed a blockbuster trade with James Harden and a couple of other pieces. Now, let me tell you, I really like the move because now the Brooklyn Nets are a bigger powerhouse and I already had them win in the East anyway, in mm -hmm. the NBA Finals. So, hey, this just add icing on the cake for me. You know, I am. I like the move because now James Harden finally got what he wanted. He got what he wanted with the trade and his destination, his original destination. So good for him being able to stronghold the NBA and the Rockets to force himself a trade out of his contract to another team. And, hey, I mean, he got what he wanted. And if that's what he wanted to be, I'm OK with that. Mm. Now, along with James Harden being moved, they had to get rid of Karis LeVert from the Nets, sent Karis over to Indiana, which mm. I really like. I'm so glad Karis can get out of the shadows yeah. of KD and Kyrie. It's, it's his time now. It's his time now. He actually proved it in the bubble, uh, the 2020 bubble. I think that it is important to know that Karis LeVert can be um, a starter on a team. And so the move for him while it may not have been what he desired, it was what he needed in order for mm. his legacy, his play production, his status in the NBA, organi NBA organization to now show he can be a top player. So to be on a team with such superstars would have continued to suppress his ability to shine. So his mm -hmm. move to the um, Indiana Pacers was great for him. So I cannot wait to see him in the starting lineup with the Pacers. I can't oh, wait. yeah. And I think he fits in well with Malcolm yeah. Brogdon and Justin Holiday, DeMontis Sabonis and Miles Turner. And they have that new co coach in uh, Nate Bjorkman, too. It's perfect. Do you think that Karis LeVert is a better fit than Victor Oladipo at, with the mm. Indiana Pacers? I'm going to say yes, only because Karis is used to coming off the bench. He may mm. not feel as entitled as Victor did. Victor was their franchise player. Ah, so I think Karis will fit in more because he doesn't need the ball as much. And to go to the Indiana Pacers, who's already number four in the East, I mean, you, you're walking into a great situation. Yeah. If I'm honest, you know, the Pacers are playing better than the Nets right now anyway. True. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, so Brooklyn also got rid of Karuk, so who's a sniper from three, but he's just not really part of the deal. I mean, he's part of the deal, but he's not the reason why the deal took place, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, um, Victor Oladipo, there were reports out that he wanted to leave Indiana anyway. anyway. So he got his wish. You know, I like the fact that Victor now gets to play in Houston, you know, with John Wall and DeMarcus Cousins and P.J. Tucker, I'm hoping that maybe it was a good move for him. I don't know how long he's going to stay there. I don't know his contract details, but for the most part, why not? Steven Silas gets to get rid of somebody who was toxic on his roster and get yep. Victor Oladipo. So, yep. hey. Yeah, I, I read some reports that Victor that may not be Victor Oladipo's final spot, the Rockets. Mm -hmm. But at any rate, he was able to get out of Indiana because that's what he wanted. So great. So whether he ends up with the Rockets as his final destination for this season or somewhere else, he got his wish. Now, hopefully he will land where he wants to land. But, hey, you're not where you were. So you sh he should be happy with that. I also like the fact that the Rockets were able to receive not only um, Victor Oladipo and the other two guys, but the first round draft picks and the pick swaps. The leverage that they gained just mm. from having those additional future picks and pick swaps can be great for them as they rebuild their organization. Because let's just face it, they are in the process of rebuilding. Yeah. And it's great, especially for a new coach. You know, of course, Silas went in, I'm, you know, can't, probably couldn't wait to work with Harden. I mean, come on, Harden, who wouldn't, who wouldn't want to work with a, a shooter like Harden, right? 
But if he didn't want to be there and he became toxic within the locker room because he didn't want to be there, then Silas is probably like, okay, well, then I got to shift gears. And now I can create the team that I want. Yeah. I can now acquire the, the players that I recruit, you know, along with his staff. Man, please. It's a brand new day for the Houston Rockets. And good for them. They needed it, right? They probably wanted Harden to really be there and um, bring them a championship, but it just wasn't in the cards. So now that we have to shift gears, hey, come on, Silas. Now it's, this is your turn to create whatever you want the Houston Rockets to be. And I'm excited about that. Yeah. Well, you know, the only thing is he said that the only reason why he really wanted the Houston Rockets head coach and job was because of James and Russ. And now they're both gone. You know what? Guess what? Things change. So hopefully he's able to adjust with it. Like such is life. Right. <laughs> Such is life. So now you should be able to look at this new future, hashtag rebuild, and then go for it. James Harden received a lot of flack from a lot of the NBA talking heads with this trade. And the one thing that I personally dislike was his just attitude leading up to it. Steven Silas did not deserve all of that. It was just unfair to him. It was unfair to the organization. And he threw Boogie and John Wall and PJ and Eric Gordon, everybody under the bus. I... From the beginning, when there was discussion about um, James Harden wanting, wanting out of the Houston Rockets, the fact that he wanted to request a trade was no of no consequence to me. I was like, well, you know what? He has a right because these teams will trade you in a heartbeat, mm -hmm. right? So I was okay with that. People should request a trade and you know should be where you want to be. No problem. But the way he went about it, that is what I disliked about it. You cannot show up to your job not prepared to do your job and cause so much disruption on the Rockets that for me was unfair, not only unfair, not unfair to his, the players he's played with for years, mm -hmm. unfair to the organization that pays him top dollar and unfair to the new coach and all the, and unfair to the fans. Like you just going to sit up here and act up really? So you're going to go out there and play, but you're not going to give your best effort. So you think I'm going to trust you moving forward, even with the new team or your character. It was a mm -hmm. character awakening for me. And I think that's one of the things I disliked about it. So you got your way perfect, but the way you did it, maybe didn't act fast enough. I don't know, but you signed a contract mm -hmm. with them. You signed that contract. Yeah. They expected you to perform up to the contract. And you didn't do that? Like, really? Is that what this world is? Oh, not my world. Excuse me. Maybe the world of the richest. I don't know. <laughs> I, I didn't get it. I, I, didn't like, I didn't like his method on achieving his end result. I just didn't like it. So I hope yeah. it's worth it for him. I hope it's worth it. I hope it, it produce, produces the championship that he, you know, wants so bad. And maybe being with the Brooklyn Nets will give him what that is. Now, the one thing about Jerry Allen and Toreen Prince going over to the Cleveland Cavaliers is like, I don't know that this is going to be a good move for their careers. Jerry Allen should be a starter. He should have been a starter for the Brooklyn Nets. But instead, now the Nets are stuck with DJ at center and Jared is in Cleveland with Andre Drummond. I just don't. I just don't I know that it's going to work out well for him. You know, I, it, it did. It, I was saddened to know that Jared, Al, Jared Allen was a part of the trade. Um, and then when I found out he went to Cleveland, I was like, oh, sorry. You know, it's unfortunate, though, because I think his hope, I think his career took a step back going to Cleveland when he was doing such a great job at the center position for the Brooklyn Nets to then take all of that effort and then have to go to Cleveland. Like, yeah. Why? Oh my gosh. So hopefully there's a plan for him in Cleveland where he is not rotting on the bench. I hope there's a plan for him. And I, yeah. my feelings. I was I was like, Oh, y'all dirt. Oh, the business of basketball. Yeah. But you know, the thing is Cleveland didn't even need another center. You got JaVale, Andre, and now Allen. Like, I forgot about JaVale. Mm -hmm. They don't need, they don't even need Jared Allen. There has to be a plan. And so hopefully that plan will be revealed really soon, but to have all of that, that was just becoming its own to sit and wait. Oh my mm -hmm. goodness. Yeah, oh, it's a bad move. Yeah.
It's no fun in going somewhere you, you're not needed. Hey, Jared. Yes, it's your agent. You've been traded. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've been traded. Well, where am I going? The Cleveland Cavaliers. Right. Mm -mm. You know, another thing that I really disliked about this whole blockbuster trade was... Brooklyn ruined their depth completely because there was this thing, you know, like you said in the last episode, it's like, look, Brooklyn had a bunch of players who could start on any team. I don't know if that's the case anymore because they depleted their bench to get James Harden. So they don't need role. So these superstars are going to play 40 plus minutes a night. Okay. See, Set the new precedent. I, I, can't, I can't wait to see it. I cannot yeah. wait to see it. And they're gobbling up all of the salary cap. I think KD makes 40 plus. Kyrie and Harden are close to 40, if not, mm -hmm. you know, like high 30s or whatnot. They're just, it's not looking good. So do you think that Steve Nash would have all three of them on the court at the same time? He has to. <laughs> Who's going to come off the bench? What does the rotation look like? Can't wait yeah. to see it. I can't wait mm -hmm. to see it. I can't wait to see it. I, you know, like you, I had um, the Brooklyn Nets coming out of the East. I did. <laughs> I had them coming out of the East way before when we did our preseason predictions. So the fact that they added James Harden, but the Brooklyn Nets was going to do it anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, they were. They, like, were. They, didn't, they didn't even need them, but now they have them. Cool. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. And, you know, DeAndre Jordan is going to get exposed at center now. Oh, that's going to be the big, uh, you know what? I, and I'm waiting for that because they're going to be like, oh, maybe we shouldn't have done Jared. No, you shouldn't have done Jared. No. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's going to be fun. Must see TV. I yeah. expect the Houston Rockets to really make some noise now that they got rid of that dead weight. Everybody can be there because oh. they want to be there. You know, it's just, it'll be a more complete working environment. Yeah, I think so. And, and it's hard to be in an environment where someone of a certain level does not want to be there. The, the team can now rebuild. The Houston Rockets can now rebuild. And that's just what it is for them. And so good, good for them. Yeah. Let me just tell you something right now. What I expect is the winners of the NBA championship 2021 to be the Brooklyn Nets. Oh, absolutely. Anything other than that is a bust. Oh my God. Can they you do not. And let me just tell you right now, if the Brooklyn Nets do not make it to the Eastern conference finals, I don't want to hear no excuses because y'all didn't give any, I didn't give any to the Clippers mm -hmm. when they fumbled their chances. I'm just, what I'm saying right now, the Brooklyn Nets do not have any leeway not to make it out of the championship as the winner. They just don't, they, they don't. Yeah, they do have a lot of pressure to win it all. However, if somebody gets injured, one of the big three gets injured, I think it kind of changes the expectation. Why? Because if it's KD who suffers an injury, you think the Nets can make it out of the East? No, no, no. I, I agree. So let's just be clear when we're talking about that. First of all, I don't want anybody to be injured because I want to see people play and compete with full with a healthy roster. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to that, right? But at the end of the day, for me, and the reason why I had Brooklyn Nets coming out of the East anyway is because of KD. It is Kevin Durant I trust. That is it. If he is not on the roster, they are not going anywhere. I don't care if they have Kyrie or James Hart for me. So I have all of my trust in Kevin Durant. Yeah. Okay. Now, Indiana Pacers are already playing really well right now with the addition of um, Karis LeVert. They can only go up from here. So I expect them to make it to the Eastern Conference playoffs. I do not expect them to come out of the East. But, you know, they may make it to the second round. I, I can support that. That's great. Yeah, with this new group and, you know, trying to get to know one another. Again, Karis LeVert is coming onto a team that's doing very, very well right now. So it's going to be an adjustment period for him to get his, you know, his footing with the new game plan that, Bjork and has so yeah it's going to be some adjustments hopefully during mm -hmm. his time of adjustments they'll still be winning you know and um yeah it'll be fine for him but Karis LeVert your future is bright don't even worry about it yeah and then lastly the Cleveland Cavaliers 
I have them being 15th in the East. Even though they're playing okay right now, six and seven right now, seventh in the Eastern Conference, it won't last. It's not going to last. It, yeah, nice try, but no. Enjoy it while you can. I mm-hmm. don't see it. You be, The moment the Hawks become healthy again, it's... <laughs> Yeah, so no. Mm -mm. Cleveland, (laughs) Cleveland, find out what you want to do with Jared Allen. Because if you don't find out what you want to do with him, trade him. Put him somewhere he's going to be more effective. Don't waste this. Don't waste his. Don't waste his youth, his momentum, on the on the bench. Don't do it. Yeah, don't do it. I hope not. Mm-mm. All right, you guys. Well, hey, look, that wraps up this episode of what we like and dislike about this blockbuster trade and some of our expectations yes. now that the roster is set. So we're going to be watching. Make sure you guys drop down in the comments and let us know what you think. And we will see you guys on the next one. But until then, peace. Peace, y'all.